All right, so um, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to um, technically, officially our second um, social distant or distant learning uh, PowerPoint lecture note. So again, um, I have open um, the population growth pop, uh, note. And again, if you guys look at the um, canvas, this would be our fourth note since April is coming. Uh, I mean, the end of April is coming. So don't forget, we will have our um, interactive notebook check. So make sure you open, open with Cami. Okay, open with Cami. So we are on population growth. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about population growth. Uh, looking at this, right, population, human, right? Um, review alert, review alert. Uh, let's connect what we learned so far uh, since um, the week that we left off, um, uh, from left off school, and then also when we took off for a spin break. So just a quick review. Our review is that we talk about food web, right? We talk about food change. We talk about biodiversity, right? Biodiversity is when you have uh, so many different types of living organism um, in, a, in this biosphere, right? Um, and then how they interact with each other, right? We talk about symbiosis, okay? Um, so they interact with each other through the transfer of energy and that's through food web. Uh, you gotta remember the 10% rule. For example, you have the, uh, the mouse here eating the grass. Um, that mouse would get the energy from the grass. And you gotta remember the grass is considered a producer, right? Cause they, they use photosynthesis to produce energy. Um, the energy from the grass are then passed to the mouse. And let's say the mouse eat 100% of the grass, right? Um, they will be full. But as the mouse go throughout the day, it will lose, um, you remember the 10% rule? It will lose 90% of those energy um, as heat. It's kind of like us. When we eat, we're 100% full. As we go out through our day, the day, we lose 90% as heat because we exercise, we do things. So in the end, we have only 10% of that food or the mouse in this case, have only 10% of that food from the grass in its stomach. So that means for it to be, continue to be full, it needs to eat another 90%, eat more, right? And that's what we call the 10% rule of energy because the other 90% dissipate, disappear as heat into the, uh, um, the environment. And that's food web. And then we talk about um, right, many biodiversity, many different living things. So they have to learn to uh, live together, interact to each other. And that's what we call symbiotic relationship. And there's three types, right? We said there are three types of symbiotic relationship. Commensalism, okay? parasitism, and mutualism. And we said which one is the best real symbiotic relationship that you and your friends should have, or you should have with the other living thing. And that'll be mutualism, right? Mutualism would be the best, number one, right? Because both sides will benefit. It's kind of like you and your friend come together, study for a test, and both you guys did well, so you both benefit. And then the second um, okay symbiotic relationship would be commensalism, right? And that'll be one is positive, the other one doesn't care, right? So it's kind of like um, you borrow a complete homework from your friend, right? You benefit, your friend don't care because your friend already finished the assignment. And the least one that you don't want a relationship with is parasitism, right? Parasitism, parasite. You don't benefit, you get hurt, you get hurt. Your friend, on the other hand, benefit. So it's kind of um, it's kind of like uh, cheating on the test, right? Um, your friend benefits the answer, and then you got caught. Now you get a zero, but your friend get an 
a, a good grade, right? Because you got caught uh, for sharing that, but I didn't catch your friend. Make sense? So the least is parasitism and that's symbiotic relationship. And then we move on to talk about succession, right? Because we know that in an ecosystem, uh, in an environment, things don't stay the same all the time, right? They are not stagnant, they're not stay the same. They change over time. And we have two types of changes, primary and secondary. Primary succession is when that, in, that environment start out from zero. There's no soil, there's no nutrient, right? It's like zero living thing. And slowly, you gotta remember the pioneer species, the first living thing that come in, in this case, the lichens, right? The, the algae and the fungus combination. They come in, they break down rocks, they release soil, um, and then slowly life come back. Like, let's say a volcano uh, eruption, lava come out, destroy all life. And then you have the lichen come in, break down the rocks, and then it release nutrient into the soil. And then the second type of uh, succession is secondary succession. Let's say you have a forest fire, right? Soil is still there. Some living things still there and light pick up from there. So for example, this picture here, that would be what type of succession? That'd be secondary succession, right? Secondary, okay. All right, clean this. So today we're gonna move on, right? So we talk about how living things live together, um, right? Then I'm moving on to the next question relating to the, the 11 hour um, that we uh, that I had you guys watch, right? We're moving on to a human population because we said change, right? We picking up from the, the succession idea is change, right? In that 11 hour um, um, video, one of the question was, why has there been such a large growth in human population, right? Because change. Why suddenly then there they mention Right? Normally, our human population are around here, right? 1600, 1700, 1800, right? Uh, it's around 1 billion. 1 billion, right? Four, four thousands of years, right? For 1800, for a thousand, around 2000 years, things stay 1 billion human, right? And then suddenly there's a succession, there's a change. It pick up, it went within only, within only uh, like a hundred year, right? 1900 to 2000, 1900 is here, 2000 is there. It start to pick up to five billion, so it double. And then 2000 to what now, it went up to uh, around 8 billion, right? 8 billion, right here, 8 billion. So the question is why? What make it suddenly go up? Do you guys remember from the video? Okay. I include a picture here. Normally, back then, human use sunlight, natural sunlight, grow crops, make food, simple thing. So you, resource is limited. So population stay low but then suddenly i remember what they said in the video they said the industrial revolution right that's where people start to discover coal right energy resources oil crude oil right from fossil from dead dinosaur dead animal dead trees um they get buried all those carbons right get stuck instead of get broken down and we dig it up and release coal, fossil fuel, oil, gasoline, all those energy in, help us to create technology, machine, factory to produce more resources, which in turn can support more human. And that's why we pick up, right? This growth. And that's connecting to the video, 11 hour video, okay? All right, moving on today. So we talk about population growth, right? Human population, um, primarily because we are human. But you can take this idea and compare it to a uh, population of any type of living things, a tree or ants or dogs or cats, right? So we, there are <clears throat> three different things that affect population growth. First thing is birth rate, right? 
how many baby are being born. Same thing is death rate, right? How many people die, right? Because that does affect the population number. And the third thing is the rate of individual moving in and moving out of the population, right? So we don't forget, let's say you focus on the USA population. We have to consider how many people move into the US and how many people are leaving the US as well, right? Because that does affect beside baby being born in the US and also people dying from in the US. Uh, looking at this, this thing, right? continent. By the way, um, this could help you with your uh, Kahoot test. So pay attention um, that you're gonna be doing on Wednesday. So looking at this thing, right? Looking at the graph. Um, this is from 993, so a little old, right? But looking at this, which countries seem to have a uh, the fastest growth change in population growth? Are you, we look at it, we see that red or orange mean very high percent change. And voila, right? Africa. Africa has a very uh, fast change in growth. And follow that would be like South America and maybe uh, Middle East or some uh, Southeastern country. But Africa has the number one, right? Big, very big. Fastest change. Um, now also think of it, right? Look at China, right? Some of us we probably like, wait, China has a lot of human, a lot of people, but how come the growth is low, right? If you guys remember from your history lesson, you gotta remember, have you guys learned of uh, one child policy? Well, right now China don't have that policy anymore, but it used to be one child policy. So that means uh, if you work for the government, you can only have one child. It doesn't matter if boy or girl, you have one child, right? So what happened was, or else you can get fired from your job or you lose money from your workplace. So what happened was um, in for the Asian culture, they always want male because male get to carry the family names and so on. So a lot of the families, since they can have only one child, they decided if they have a girl, then they either let somebody adopt or kind of like have an abortion which in turn neg negatively affect their population growth. Because now in China, you are getting a lower percent change. And that's because male cannot find female because not enough female in China because most parents prefer the male due to the family name and stuff. So now China actually, there's a problem with the population. It decreasing fast because they don't have female and male ratio are not the same. So it's harder for a male to find um, a bride to to have kid with. So China now have going through that problem and not just China only, you also have many uh, colder uh, uh, North Euro Europe country also have that problem. And they actually pay money for you to get married and have kid. Uh, in Japan, the other time I uh, saw a YouTube video, they actually pay you money to go on date because they also have population decrease as well. Okay, But the highest would be Africa, the growth, fastest growth. All right, so speaking of population rate, um, it's very simple to understand, not much to, um, right? Population can grow when your birth rate is higher than your death rate, right? Make sense? If you have more people being born than people die, then your population will increase. Population will stay the same if number of people are born is the same number of people die. Right? You have five baby being born, five people die, then it stays the same. Right? And then population can also change, decrease if your birth rate is less than death rate, right? If you have less baby being born, more people die, then it changes, right? So not nothing new, simple, right? But we're talking about rate change, right? So population rate depending on the chain, depending on birth rate minus death rate, right? Or death rate minus birth rate. And that's a population chain. So the population rate or change always equal birth minus death, right? How many being born, how many die? That give you the rate. 
Uh, population can also change by the people moving in or people moving out of that area. Okay. So for example, you see the fish here, right? How many fish moving in? How many fish moving out? Right. When we move in, we call that immigration. And that's because it starts with the letter I, in. When we're moving out, we call that emigration. And that's because it, E stands for exit. When you exit, right? So population may grow if the individual move in, right? If you have 10 individuals move in to that area, five people moving out to that area, then it will grow. If you have 10 people moving in, 10 people move out, then population stay the same. So that's why I said may grow, may, okay? Um, and then it's the same thing with emigration, right? Population decrease, may decrease, may decrease. If the number of individual moving in is smaller than moving out, right? So you have five people move in, 10 people leave that country or the area, then population will decrease. So there, these are the factors that determine population growth. Speaking of population growth, there are two types of population growth that we're going to focus on. The first type is what we call exponential growth. You guys remember exponent, right? Uh, like five to the second, five to the third or something like that, like that, right? right? That means five times five times five. So when you have an exponential growth, things will start out very slow at the beginning. Slow. And when you have enough individual, it will pick up. And once they pick up, it go very fast. It go up and up and up. And how does this happen? And this is what we call a J curve, right? J, look like a letter J, J, right? J curve, J. Invert J curve, curve. Okay. Um, so when do you have exponential growth? Is when life is good. Everything is good. You have all the food, all the space. You don't have predator, no diseases. All the waste have been removed. Life is good. Then you have exponential growth, right? If let's just say you have a population of fish, you remove all the waste, you feed them daily, you give them a lot of like space to swim in. You don't have any predator that come and hunt them, like a raccoon and stuff, then they will grow exponentially, right? Exponentially. Does it look like when we talk about human, right? Scroll down to the human population growth. Hmm. Does the human go into exponential growth, right? right? For example, bacteria have exponential growth. Or Nowadays, we have the coronavirus, right? Coronavirus. Hmm. Let's see the coronavirus infection growth rate. Okay, let's see the graph. See what type of growth they are going through. Hmm. COVID-19 case, you see, coronavirus, right? Case, so for example, coronavirus as well, right? And we are considered a a lot of the country you hear, we're talking about this growth rate in coronavirus, right? And right now, we you keep hearing that we're talking about hitting the peak. That means right now we are still consider so some state hit the peak already or some state have not hit the peak. And that's because it's going through a exponential growth. Exponential growth. So instead of bacteria, you can change this into a virus. Right? It starts slow, very little, but as you have more people pick up the virus, suddenly now more and more people. So because life is good, 
everything, all the environment are perfect for the coronavirus. So it will keep growing, 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 growing. So the next question is, okay, COVID-19, right? So the next question is, when does the grow rate stop? When does it stop? And that's what most of the state news are talking about. When can we get to go out? When can we have social dis stop social distancing? So that means when does the grow rate stop and slow, right? And that lead us to the next grow rate, the more realistic, what we call log logistic grow, logistic grow, and logistic grow is when a population grow, slow down and then it stop. Following a following a period of exponential growth. Okay, so you look at this graph. This is what we call what when something keep growing, 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 growing. What do we call this graph again? What rate? What uh, uh, type of growth is this? Exponential growth, right? Exponential growth. And that's when life is good. Okay. Exponential growth. Life is good. But we know that's not true, right? Coronavirus, COVID-19, in the beginning is growing, growing, growing because life is good. It has so many humans. Humans are being are infecting each other. They don't distance themselves. Everybody come in contact with each other. So life is good going, going up for the virus. But then... What happened? Then we start doing the social distance, right? We stay away from each other, start wearing masks, washing our hands, be more careful. So now, what happened to the virus um, uh, environment, right? It become harder and harder for them to infect. So that's when growth start to slow down. It's still growing, but it's slowing down. It's still up and down, up and down to a point it stabilized. Stabilize, right? And this is where we are hoping that the rate of infection of COVID-19 stabilize. And once we hit that, then maybe we start to uh, shut down social distancing, people can start growing out and so on, right? And of course that comes with many factors. It could be a vaccine, um, it could be uh, more people getting immune to the virus and so on. And it's what we call logistic growth. And logistic growth is more, is more realistic, right? Because nothing is limitless. Thing has to stop, right? So hopefully that's a positive thing regarding coronavirus. As we putting all these uh, different way to um, prevent us from uh, spreading the virus, uh, it'll be harder for the virus, so there'll be a stop. So again, logistic growth is more realistic, is real, because they go through three phases. One phase is what we call exponential growth, keep going. Second phase is what we call growth slowdown. It's not stop, it's slowing down. That means the rate slowly drop, but it's still growing. And the third is what we call growth stop. That means it stabilized. That means it doesn't increase. It might increase a little bit. It might drop a little bit, but it kind of stay in the same area, okay? And this area is what we call, it hit carrying capacity. What is carrying capacity? Carrying capacity, so you see many example, right? Different organism, right? Carrying capacity, what we call the maximum number of individual, a particular species, of a particular species that environment can support. For example, right? Regarding to coronavirus, right? Um, once we, we make life hard for them to infect each other, then they have to stop. Or once we develop immune system that can fight them just like how human been doing with flu, right? We, uh, why don't we, um, we have the, uh, the rate of flu infecting is slow because a lot of us 
have been immune to it, right? Or we grow up slowly, pick up the vi the virus for the flu virus, and we learn to fight it. So, and then if we pass it somebody else, that person might have that immune system. So that's why the infection rate is slower. It's not as fast, right? Um, that's when we call carrying capacity. Think of this. Carrying capacity is like a, a barrel of water. You have all the water coming in. At first, it will grow and grow and grow. The water will start to grow and grow and grow. To a point, it starts to slow down. It can't hold the water anymore. Uh, think of human as water because of starvation, because of accident, pollution, OA, disease, and predation. Now, water will start to overflow to a point where it will hit carrying capacity, where the barrel cannot hold any more water. So let's say you have five gallons of water. You cannot fill up more than five gallons. So if you have any extra water, it has to be overflow. And that's what we call carrying capacity, right? Or you can go to an elevator, right? They have carrying capacity. It cannot hold unlimited number, right? Or an environment cannot hold unlimited organism. So bring that us to the world population. Look at this graph. So if I take a look at this graph, it gives you billion of people. It gives you the year, um, 1960, because on the test, I'm gonna talk about this. So in the 1960, how many billion people are there? 1960. And we bring over here. That will be around 3.5, 3.5 billion people. 1950, 3.5. Now let's look at 2020. How many billion do we have? Okay. Trace over. 8.5. Hmm. 8.5. How many years is that? That is 60 year. Right now. Is that 60 year? Yeah, that's a 60 year. 60 year. Within 60 year, we have double double our growth rate. Look, 1800, 1960, that's 160 year. We didn't even, we went only from like 1 billion to 3.5, right? 1960, 160 year, we double our grain in 160 year before. And again, because we didn't have all the oil, energy, fossil fuel, right? We start digging deeper and deeper, pulling out more uh, fossil fuel, crude oil. So my next question is, right? We know that in a real population, you have, you do not have exponential growth. So human population cannot grow forever, right? Because we will run out of space, run out of food, more predator, more diseases like coronavirus, see? So now the next question is, our planet, a biosphere, when, what year do we, look in this graph, do we predict that our planet start to hit the carrying capacity? Carrying capacity, that mean barrel water. That mean it cannot hold anymore, right? So if you look at this graph, This is where it slow down, right? The exponential growth here. Slowing down, slowing down. Carrying capacity is probably somewhere here, right? So then my question is, what number billion of people can the planet carry? So if you trace this over, and probably around what? Nine billion. Anybody know how many billion people we have now? Yes, it's around eight billion. So when do we hit this 9 billion carrying capacity that our planet can hold? So we draw it, pull it down, hmm. 2040. So how many more years? Around 20 more years. 20, 30 more years. How old are you now? So you're like 15, 16? 20, 30 more years, you'll be like 45, 35-ish. I'll be like 
60, so ours are still living. That means we will be experiencing carrying capacity. Life will be hard. You're going to have more starvation, more accident, more pollution, diseases, predation. Isn't that scary, right? It's in our lifetime that we're going to hit carrying capacity unless we reduce our human population or we live smarter, right? Live smarter instead of wasting all these food, right? Instead of having all these trash, all these waste, right? We need to live smarter. So again, um, do your summary. And this is population growth. Hope you understand. And if you need to, uh, this is too fast for you, read it again. I mean, watch it again. Um, just think of population grow uh, in terms of COVID-19, COVID right? They are bacteria. They are virus. They are microorganism. Uh, well, technically, they're not living things. They We don't know they're living or not because they cannot reproduce on their own. So um, think of it, right? Um, when do we hit um, carrying capacity for coronavirus, right? I mean, they cannot infect anymore because they're running out of way. Um, then maybe we'll go back to no social distancing. Um, but, and then in terms of human population, also look at our population as well. So please check out the note and um, we will do our Kahoot on Wednesday. So I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, bye-bye.